everyone, it's Jammy Jet here. It's been a while, but I felt like there was a video that I just had to do. It's one that's been on my mind for quite some time, and it's my favourite indie games of all time. And the, the reason this is the list I've wanted to do is because indie games make up probably 90% of the games I play. I mean, I do play a lot of AAA games. There's a lot of AAA games like GTA V and Dying Light I've played in recent times. But there's also a lot of indie games I've been playing, and they make up probably 90% percent of my steam library so there's a lot of them that i play i spend a lot of my time playing them and i really do enjoy them and i thought there was a lot of them that need you know, you know need a shout some of them aren't as popular as you might have thought some of them are popular and these are the ones that i thought deserved most of a mention so i'm gonna lay down 15 of my favorite ones starting with number 15 Slender the Arrival might not be the best Slender game out there, but it definitely did a good job at refreshing the franchise, and it just added some real needed characteristics to the game. The graphic update was the major thing that everyone was talking about, because obviously horror games are supposed to be immersive, and it managed to do that, and it did actually add lots of new content as the console version got released, they got lots of new content for it, and they are actually doing a sequel to this, so it's going to be interesting to see what, they, what direction they decide to take this franchise in next, but I for one thought that Slender Arrival, while it had its problems, and it was based on the original mechanics of the game, it didn't try and diverge too far from that, it was turn something on, do something else, pick up a letter, do that. It was very basic in that respect, but obviously it's based on the Slender games, so obviously they're not going to try and diverge too much from the original concept. But in that respect, I thought Slender the Arrival did really well, and it managed to stay an incredibly chilling and scary experience for the most part. Number 14, Lethal League. Now, this is an interesting choice because I'm the sort of person who plays a lot of co-op games on Steam. I like playing, you know, you get some friends or some family and you just decide to just have a blast with a multiplayer game. You grab a few controllers and a keyboard and you just mess around with games like this. And this is one of those games that is so fun and chaotic to have four players on. It only came out last year, I believe, on Steam and it's not in early access. It's a full release and it costs £10. I picked it up in the Steam Summer Sale this year, actually, and I do not regret at it one bit it's incredibly fun it has online it has lots of different fun game modes yes there's not enough content to keep playing for tens and tens of hours but it's definitely one of those games that when you've got a friend round is worth just grabbing and just seeing how much fun and how fast and chaotic you can get the game to be and it, you know the more people the better it's incredibly fun in that respect so if you're into co-op games like that this is definitely one of those games that you probably want to check out Number 13 is a slightly different game. It's a very atmospheric game that I bought in the winter sale. Just gone, I think. I picked it up, and it's called Ether One. Now, this is a game that's very, very touchy, because while it, on the surface it just seems like a nice, beautiful, atmospheric game, it actually tells about a lot of serious issues at heart. It's all to do with patients who are suffering with dementia, and you're trying to go inside their memories and uncover secrets. And it, in that respect, on the surface, it, it just seems really simple. But when you uncover secrets and things deep within, you start to realise that the game is actually quite moving, and there's quite a lot to, a lot involved with it. It's actually a really, really gorgeous game. It has this cartoony aesthetic. And again, it seems like a really simplistic game, but it's incredibly deep when you come to touch with it, you come to terms with it. it is, there's a lot of really well-designed levels. It's It sort of has this go-around-collect-things vibe to it, but there's a lot of puzzles, and there's a lot of optional puzzles to unlock secrets and achievements and things like that too, so you're not really forced to play through the game at a certain speed. So in that respect, I think the game did really, really well, because it's optional, of course, what type of experience you have. You could have a short one, you can have really, really long one where you just explore the whole world that's been crafted for you. But at the end of the day, Ether One did a really good job at painting this really sort of dark and disturbed image that's sort of hidden behind this bright and beautiful canvas. Number 12 is this very, very, very different game, and I was really sort of on the edge between putting something like The Binding of Isaac Rebirth on here, and I thought, that's just, it's too common a game, I just, I've got to put something different in its place, and it's not because I think this is better, it's because it's it's similar, but it takes it to a new level, it has a really nice 8-bit style, art style that I just I adore it. it has this arcadey vibe. You even get to put in a three-digit code as your name at the beginning. You can play with three friends. It's co-op, so unlike the Binding of Isaac, it has that appeal to you know crack out a few controllers and play a co-op game with some friends. Um, 
and you play against each other as well. It's not really co-op. You work against each other. You take turns of playing as monsters while one person plays as the hero. When you're the monsters, you're obviously trying to stop the hero. But then whoever kills the hero takes his place and sort of tries to get to the end. And then it's just a case of can you beat the final boss? And this game has a lot of content. It is early access, I believe, but that doesn't stop it from being a really good game. It's one of those early access games that actually is early access. It's just updating content. It's not fixing problems with the game like other games. <clears throat> Daisy. <clears throat> the forest mm. but seriously there are a lot of really good things to look forward to in this game and they even added Gabe Newell as a boss that's right Gabe Newell is in the game as a boss and Valve were okay with that so hats off to the developers for that early access games seem to be all over Steam at the moment but number 11 is a, one that I thought was a little bit different it's in a roguelike horror game that's randomly generated so every experience is different there's different monsters there's different things to collect there's different escape routes to escape this ship and it actually managed to get through early access so again you can't hats off to the developers for actually getting through the whole process the game might not be amazingly well optimized and does occasionally drop down in frames you know it's not 100% consistent all the time but I would say for the most part the game runs well I haven't really had any issues with it and I think it's probably one of my favorite horror games that I've played this year alone so there you go that is Monstrum if you like early access horror games or you like horror games in general this is probably one that you'd want to want to check out because it's very very different and it's very unusual that you sort of you're given this choice to to go around and collect things and escape in different routes that sort of thing but there you go, Monstrum. If you like horror games, definitely worth checking this one out. Number 10 is Speedrunners, yet another co-op game. There's a few of these on this list, by the way, and it's a really, really exciting, fast-paced runner where you compete with friends or compete online against strangers to just see who can come first. It's like 2D Mario Kart, if you will. You play as a bunch of really weird yet funny characters that have their own personal pizzazz to them but at the same time there's a lot to, it's a lot going for it it recently came out of early access too so it it got through the process it's possible guys it happens and it managed to be incredibly successful a lot of really big youtubers are really famous for playing games like this online through live streams and things um, and it's a really addicting game. You say, oh, I'll just sit down and play a few games with some friends, and you end up playing it for hours. It's a game that you can just sit there, and there's so much content through the Steam Workshop with this game that, that there's just so much to keep coming back for. There's new achievements. There's even a leveling up system that's been recently added to the game. So, again, there's a lot of content there. It's something that seems incredibly simple but becomes frustratingly difficult the further you progress. Now, here's a game that I didn't think I'd... I'd ever purchase, but I'm so glad I did. Besiege at number 9 is one of those games that is just so addicting to build things and create creations and it's incredibly simple to learn. You can look up online tutorials, you can even download people's creations online through the store and it's really, really fun to play through some of the pre-generated levels or you know, you can even create your own cre creations in the open world. You can test them in obstacle courses. There's, it is early access and it's incredibly early alpha at this point. But there's still enough content to make the £5 price completely justified in my opinion. Seriously, the amount of content you're getting already is already well over the worth of £5. Or $7 as this game costs. It's really not expensive and it's incredibly fun to watch your creations being destroyed in slow motion. At number 8 is Badland, Game of the Year edition. So this recently came out on Steam. These are all Steam games, in case you're wondering. But some of them are on consoles too. This game actually came out on PS4, I believe, as well. On PS3 and PS Vita. But uh, it's the same game that was on iOS that became incredibly successful and won loads of awards. But it's been given a lovely lick of paint in HD. And it looks absolutely stunning with all the different things going on in the background and the foreground. It's like Limbo's Love Child. And it's absolutely beautiful to play. It has, it has co-op modes as well. There's incredible amount of content in this game. Seriously, you could be playing playing for six or seven hours just through the story missions then there's the extra levels that they've added there's loads of online leaderboards achievements missions to complete on each level i mean you could play this game for tens of hours if you wanted to even with co-op you can play with keyboard controller you name it you can play and it's incredibly addicting to see if you can beat your high score beat your friends or just 
have fun and just mess around and try and get your friends killed for a laugh. I'd really recommend you pick this up, but I'm not sure whether it's on sale. It only came out recently on Steam, so you'd probably have to pay full price for it, but it's probably still worth it, in my opinion. Do you like Super Meat Boy? And do you like four-player co-op games with lots of blood and guts? Well, the Bloody Trapman could be for you because it's so fun to play with a few friends. It has local co-op. It also has online co-op. I say co-op, but you can actually race each other. There's loads of different game modes. You can just There's world maps. It's basically Super Meat Boy with four players. And it is incredibly fun and addicting and frustrating at that as well, as you can see. It's incredibly gory and it's really fun to just play with a, a large group of friends just dying one after the other. It has its rewards, and there are a lot of levels in this game to churn through, and there's loads of different race modes and things like that, so it's definitely a game that's worth picking up if you're interested in that sort of thing. If you like Super Meat Boy, definitely check this game out. Number 6, Gang Beast. Now, this is a game that is in early access on Steam, but it's another four-player co-op game, and it has this really cool, cutesy art style that I think works in its favour, if you ask me. It's constantly updated with new levels, new skins, new everything really, and the game is so fun to play with four friends, seriously, with, I say with four friends, but of course it's only four players, so you need three friends to play it. Yourself and three friends, it's incredibly addicting to just mess around, learn the controls, come to grips with all the new arenas, and just mess around in general. If you like four player showdown arena games like this, then you should probably check it out. It's about £12, $15 on Steam. It doesn't often go on high sales, and even in the summer sale this year, it was only 33% off. But still, I reckon this game is probably worth full price, if you ask me. Now, this is where the list starts to get interesting, because the next five games on this list are games that I honestly recommend you pick up right now. Like, if you're looking for some five games to take... Take your mind, I say mind, this game's called Mind Path of Talamus. Take your mind off this summer. This game is probably one of the ones I'd recommend the most. It has an absolutely stunning soundtrack. Honestly, it's probably my favourite video game soundtrack I've ever heard. And I don't know if you can hear it in the background now, but my favourite song in the whole soundtrack is in this trailer, and it's really good. The whole game itself hinges on sort of... A close relationship between a father and a daughter, and you're sort of investigating, or you're you're sort of in your in your dreams, and it's all to do with um, sort of your sanity in a way, and you're solving puzzles, and the game hinges on you know your mind essentially, and it's about the relationship you have, and it's incredibly moving because it's honestly I think the voice acting is good. This game was made by one person he coded everything he designed everything and i think that's hats off to you you made this whole game and it was honestly one of the best games i've ever played i mean compared to triple a games the graphics on this game were honestly better than a lot of triple a games i've ever seen it runs really well on my computer it's honestly it's a really really good game it was in a humble bundle recently actually for three or four dollars in the three or four dollar tier so if you don't want to pay full whack for this game like 10 12 quid or fifteen dollars or whatever. I'd honestly recommend that you just pick up the the Steam or the Humble Key. It it will be so much cheaper, and it's definitely worth it. Every every penny. Now this is another great game, and it only came out recently. And I'm so glad I picked it up because I heard about it a couple of months ago, and I thought this looks like a really interesting game that I'm gonna really want to play. And I'm really glad I picked it up because it's an indie horror game but with a twist, because it's based on a true story of these Russian students who went missing in the mountains, and it's a completely unexplained event. Like nobody knows what happened to them. They were sort of they, they escaped their tent, they fled because something was obviously chasing them they you know escaped the tent it was all ripped from the inside so they know that they obviously they weren't attacked from the outside and their bodies were found and they don't know they couldn't really explain what happened to them because they had like bruises and stuff on them like they'd been attacked by something internal bleeding that sort of thing and then this game sort of takes a supernatural approach on things and it's a gorgeous indie game it's honestly probably one of the best looking indie games i've ever played only came out june so earlier this month, uh, depending on when I upload this video, but um, 
it's honestly it's a gorgeous game it has this open world and it has like you can go around collecting these things in any order you want so there's no you're not forced to do anything the monsters in this game are really creepy there's a really good map system that involves uh, coordinates that you've got to sort of do yourself it's not you're not fed to you in any way you're sort of on your own and you've got to figure things out and i really respect the game for doing that you're sort of just left to your own accord and there's a lot of really good things about this game and Sean Be uh, Sean Penn narrates it Sean Sean Penn Sean Bean narrates it rather I sound like an idiot now but Sean Bean narrates this um so if that wasn't enough to make you want to pick up the game I don't know what is so there's just no pleasing some people Teslagrad at number three. This is where things start to get even more interesting because Teslagrad, in my opinion, is one of the best indie games to ever come out. Now, there are a few indie games which I feel like I should mention at this point which aren't on the list. The Binding of Isaac, obviously, that I previously mentioned. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth probably should have been on the list, but I felt that Crawl was a more interesting choice to put on. Another game that I thought I'd put on was Super Meat Boy, but then I thought Bloody Trapland. It's like Super Meat Boy, but it's got this, you know, four-player co-op thing going about it. I thought that would be more interesting. But then Tesla Grad. Now, this is a 2D platformer that just needs a mention because I played a Let's Play on my channel of this and I actually got to the final boss and I never ended up beating it. And a lot of people have been asking me, oh, can you please complete this because I need to beat the final boss and I just haven't been able to, I uh, haven't had the time and I just never got around to doing it uh, because I found it so hard and I didn't even beat it in my spare time. But this game is a puzzle game with, an, with a twist. It's in, all to do with magnetism. There's some really interesting boss fights, some really interesting... In fact, the soundtrack to this game is really good. I actually bought it because I was so sort of like entranced by this soundtrack. I thought it was amazing. And I really, really recommend you pick up this game if you like puzzle platformers like this. Now, if this isn't the most iconic horror game to come out in the last 10 years and I don't know what is other than maybe Slender because this game changed everything in terms of the horror genre it paved the way for basically a bunch of amnesia clones that, that have come out since this game came out and while the sequel was a little bit dull in my opinion this game was definitely where it's at it was just threw you into a situation. You had to figure out where you are. You had to escape. There were monsters tracing you. And it just it had this incredibly slow curve to where things started to get really creepy. It wasn't a case of, let's just throw you in the deep end, scare you from the beginning. It was so subtle with its jump scares. And it's only for about two or three hours in that you actually encounter monsters. It's that slow of a game. The pace is really well done, in my opinion. It's like a horror film. But you don't see the monster until, like, right at the end. It's literally like that i mean it's incredibly well done i mean <laughs> probably worth comparing it to the godzilla movie if i'm honest with you <laughs> you barely see any monsters and it's all about the atmosphere that it creates and all about solving puzzles and investigating who you are and finding out the truth now this is probably one of my favorite horror games of all time and it's probably this is my second favorite indie game as i've probably already mentioned at number one, we have Ori and the Blind Forest. Now, I must say, this game shocked me because I really wasn't expecting it to be as moving and powerful as it was. It was incredibly well done, and the first 20 minutes are so sad yet powerful. It's unreal. You sort of get thrown into this world, and it's so, so strong. The emotions it creates, it's like a Disney film come to life. And... While you are playing as a character that looks like the reincarnation of Stitch, the game, honestly, it's anything but a Disney film um, because it's really action-packed, it's well-paced, and in my opinion, it's probably my favourite indie game ever, ever made. And it only came out in 2015, so there you go, that ind good indie games do happen, and it shows that the gaming industry is still, it's still got it, it's still got this amazing ability. If I only had one thing to say bad about this game, it would be that once you complete it, there's no way to go back and get all the unlockables, which is really a shame because I was hoping to do that, and it kind of upset me that you couldn't. But there you go, Ori and the Blind Forest is my favourite indie game ever. If you had a different list and if you don't agree with any of my choices, I want to know what your favourites are because these are my opinions on what I like most and everyone's different, everyone has a different opinion. But if you have a favourite list, let me know down below. What's your favourite 10, 15, 5, whatever indie games ever made? Thank you for watching. Peace out. Boop.